Welcome to Crafted Sweetly. I'm Diana. Thanks so much for being here. In this video, I wanted to show you my favorite tools for book folding. So if you're a subscriber to my channel, which you're, if you're not, then please subscribe below. But if you are, um, then you've seen a lot of my videos are tutorials. In this video, I really won't be showing you a tutorial of any kind that's more about my favorite tools for book folding. And you can certainly use other tools and people have come up with their own ways of doing things, but I just wanted to show you what I use and what's worked well for me. So I'll start off with the book stand, with the book folding stand. And this is a uh, wood. It has little pads on the bottom so it doesn't scratch your work area. And this folds nice and flat. So at the bottom, there's the rod that's going to be used to hold the pages up. And if you look at the side of it here, it has three different heights as far as where you can place this rod. So this holds up and then there are wing nuts. There are wing nuts here to um, tighten it in place. And then this one, instead of trying to slide it through the whole thing, it fits snug on one side and then on the other so that it doesn't slip out when you're folding your book. So it takes a little bit of pressure to kind of get it into place, but once it's there, it doesn't move. So you can tighten this and then when you work on a book, you're just gonna put your pages here and it holds them in place. Okay, so this is one of my, uh, I definitely use this every time I'm doing book folding. So I'll fold this back down. Same thing, just pop it out. And then I tighten this so they don't flop down. And I love this little storage area for the, the rod. Okay, so that's my book folding stand. Now next in line would be um, this 180 marker that I've come up with. And what's nice with it is that it has this lip right here and that's going to butt up against your pages. So when you have your book like this, this will go right against the, the pages. And I have a tutorial on my book stand. I have a tutorial on how to use the 180 marker. I've done um, probably a dozen different videos on various book folding techniques. So be sure to check those out if you want to look at a particular type of fold. And I also have one on tips on using this. Now, when I first started with this 180 marker, it looked like this. So it was put together from various, you know, uh, uh, no, not an assortment, but multiple pieces of wood. The new and improved version is actually one piece of wood with the slots in between. And I have a tutorial on how to use this as well. Um, but the main thing with this is you want to make sure your book is completely 90 degrees here if you have it like this obviously this can't butt up against anything so you're not gonna have even marks you want to make sure this is completely straight here and when I get towards the end of the book I tend to use a tile you can use one long tile like this or a couple of smaller tiles or something just to put a little height behind it so that would be something like this what I would put this here and that would be back to the book giving me the height right there in order for me to be able to put this tool and then mark. Okay, now when I'm marking pages, so if I'm using a 180 marker, you need to score the line somehow. And for that, I'm using one of these um, stylus embossing kind of tools. It comes, you can get it as a set and it's going to have different widths for this. Um, this one's a little bigger. I've got one that's finer. You don't want to go too fine with it because then you can easily pierce through the paper. But this one works well when I place it down on my book. When I place the 180 marker on the book here. And obviously I'm not using the stand at the moment, but when you put it down, the one thing with this is, and you're using the 180 marker, you always want to have make sure that this is in the same position. So one time it's not like this, 
one time like this one you know you just want to make sure you're consistent as far as scoring it so this is a good one you can use other things you don't want to use anything sharp against the wood because you can easily splinter through that or you know kind of cut into the edge of it and then it's gonna st you're shaving it off um, and if it's too thick it's not gonna fit between the, the slots that are here so this works well because it's got this you know metal tip part once you have your page uh, scored then you can use the back of this sort of like this if you have it and use this as a uh, boning tool you know like folder sometimes I reach for one of these it's gonna give you a crisp edge so that's certainly an option is to use a bone folder to do that now the next tool that I love once I discovered this my I my eyes totally thanked me for for this is an Incra ruler and what's nice with this is that it's got the same thing you know like 90 degree angle here so when you're placing it down it's gonna go right against the the book here so there is no question about it sliding um, you know going like this because you're gonna have a gap as long as this butts up right against the top of the book it's always gonna be consistent and then what's nice with the Incra ruler is that when you're marking it it does have tiny holes if you can see right there my hand through them um, there are slots here if you wanna if you like using lines I prefer just using the dots so when I place down my ruler it's easy to I don't have to make sure that you know with a regular ruler when you're using it and this is just an inch one just to ex show you well, let me grab a millimeter one but with this one when you're placing it down you know you kind of have to make sure this is even you have to make sure as you're counting that you're at the right millimeter mark so all that stuff takes time with the Incra ruler you, all that guessing is taken out you've got your 30 and then like two right there so 3.2 right there 4.7 you know 6.5 so it's really easy to go down the line and again if you prefer the the slots for this then you can do that which it would be a line versus the dots but the dots work well for me when you use the anchor ruler you do need to use a pencil that has a 0.5 millimeter lead in it 0.7 will not fit through the holes here and I haven't tried the slots with a 0.7 but it looks like the same thickness so um, it is a 0.5 millimeter that I use for here and then that's why I purchased this and for all of the supplies that I'm mentioning I have a link below in the description box so if you're interested you have quick easy link to um, check out the the products next once you have everything marked then I use uh, scissors um, people have used exacto knives uh, scalpel tools this works well for me um, what I like is that it has a very sharp tip so that it's not going to kind of break the paper especially on those one millimeter cuts so when I cut it's a very precise cut for it and this is just the Fiskars scissors now once you get into the coloring of the pages a couple of options um, if you're just coloring like if you're coloring something that did not have a 180 fold you can't use cardstock so at that point you're gonna use marker I like to use sharpies for that um, and what I like is that it has a wide tip to it so that when I'm marking across the page it's not a skinny line and it also kind of bleeds through the page so that I don't have to do both sides of the page as far as coloring it so usually sharpies are my go-to for that another option for coloring if you're not using this and I did a tutorial where I colored not the image that I was folding but the negative space um, I used alcohol ink and for that to use the alcohol ink I was using one of these 
applicator tools with a sponge on it. And I would just apply the alcohol ink and then run it across the, the page so that it colored the page on both sides at the same time. Meaning, you know, this side and this side right at the edge. So this was another possibility for applying color. Now, if you are using cardstock, once you've done a 180 fold, then what I like to use is for the cardstock. So if I need to color the design using cardstock because I've done a 180 fold, then I like to use this cutter pillar paper cutter. Obviously, again, same thing. You can use whatever paper cutter you have. You don't have to go and purchase a new paper cutter if you have one. I'm just showing you my preferred tools. Um, what I like with this is that it's super fast. So, um, you know, it squares off nicely here and you can go as thin as you'd like. You don't need to go super thin when you're doing for book folding. This is probably too thin. So I think that was maybe a that was a quarter of an inch. So let me go a little wider for it. But it cuts really nicely. So these are, you know, kind of the size that I use for coloring with cardstock. One thing to keep in mind when you are using cardstock, you want to make sure that the paper is like if you're looking at this paper, I don't know if it's maybe a little hard to see. I'll hold it against here is the edge is white so this is actually a paper with white core and the way you can tell is if you rip this right there you can see that it's a white inside it's actually just black on the outside so when you're using cardstock for book folding you do need to make sure that the cardstock is colored through the core that way when you're because when you're looking at the paper you're actually looking when you're putting it in a book fold you're looking at this so you're technically putting another white piece of paper where you're trying to color okay so that's why you need to make sure that when you're coloring when you're putting in this is black also okay so if i rip this a little bit i'll show you see that's black on the inside versus the white here okay and this is what you want for book folding you want the paper with a solid colored core not white okay so i like to use this for doing the the coloring part of it for the 180 folds um, other than that the last thing really is the outside of the book i mean i'll use ribbon to tie the book at the bottom for example um, and then the other thing is wrapping your book um, on the outside and for that if I need to wrap I'll usually use double-sided tape on cardstock and then I have a tutorial on how to wrap your book super fast with paper with cardstock um, all the way around so that way you know you don't see the spine at all and it's covered completely and then I'll just use this um, easy runner double-sided tape because it's really fast to go all the way around the cardstock I mean around the paper that I'm wrapping it with and you can check out that tutorial as well so below I'll link all the various supplies and then I'll also link some of the videos but if you just check the book folding playlist you can see all the various videos I have done for book folding I hope this was helpful um, again it's a lot of tools you may already have um, around the house if you're doing obviously you're probably gonna have scissors but as you start doing more and more book folding you're gonna try and get things that will work better and make it easier for you to fold and have a consistent fold throughout the book um, if you have any questions about any of these please don't hesitate to comment below um, if you do book folding, join my Facebook group and post your books there, your projects. Would love to see those as well. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next project, whether it's book folding or not. I do lots of different videos, not just book folding. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.